Hello there, I often describe product scents in my content and talk about the power of scent memories, but perfume isn't a subject I've explored on its own before. I always felt like I didn't have enough to share because I've basically been loyal to the same scent for nearly 10 years, but it's one of my most requested videos, so I've decided to turn this into more of a walk down perfume memory lane, revisiting scents from my past as well. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the website builder I use to make my blog, matildaonvideo.com. If you've watched my videos before, you probably know what's coming. I love rose scents, so I've gathered up some of my favorite rosy products in a new blog post. There's nothing quite like recognizing a scent as you walk past a perfume counter or a person in the street, and it instantly transporting you back to a particular time, place, or person. That's the time traveling power and magic of scent memories, so it was really fun reading visiting about 18 years worth of bottles here. For some of you, fragrance might be one of your most collected beauty categories. I often see vanities full of different bottles and people picking different scents to wear for a particular occasion or location or mood, but I really only have one bottle in my bathroom my signature scent. Friends always comment on it and I love that someone I might not have seen in a long time will still smell it and say, oh, Red Roses. It's Jo Malone Red Roses, my favorite perfume for almost a decade, I think. People compliment or ask about this light, floral, realistic garden rose all the time. Interestingly, it also has hints of lemon, crushed violet leaves and honeycomb too. I never knew, rose certainly wins. No idea how many bottles I've been through, the 100 ml bottle Bottle is always on my bathroom counter. Sometimes I swap to the 30 mil. It's a bit easier to carry or travel with. I wish they sold this baby red roses too. It was from a Jo Malone Christmas cracker a few years ago. I love the scent so much. I have the whole family at home. Candle, hand wash, body and hand lotion, and bath oil. Tracy Ellis Ross is a fan of that one. This is not sponsored by the way. I've never been sent anything or worked with Jo Malone. I would love to. I just adore that red roses range. I love the whole range really. Her scent are fresh and light in clear scent profiles. The combinations aren't too complicated and they feel like such a treat to use. My mum is a Jo Malone wild bluebell person and I like it too. It's sweeter than red roses but still light and reminds me of bluebell woods that bloom in the UK. It's one of Meghan Markle's favourites from my very first celebrity makeup bag video and I love that one of you recently left me a comment saying you'd decided to wear this at your wedding. Congratulations! Let's step back in time and move on to perfume memories, revisiting previous bottles from different parts of my life. There's a mix of eau de toilette, EDT and eau de parfum, EDP here. Parfum is stronger and more concentrated. The first scent I can remember wearing is DKNY Be Delicious. Anyone else? This was everywhere in the early to mid 2000s, described as fresh, floral and fruity with notes of apple, bottle shape is very fitting, cucumber, grapefruit, magnolia, tuberose, violet, sandalwood and amber. It's so crisp and nostalgic for me. I'm taken back to my childhood bedroom, flicking through fashion magazines on the floor and this bottle's on the mantelpiece. Another transporting teenage scent is Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. I did a language course in France that finished in Paris where I found this famous faceted bottle under the grand glass dome of department store Galerie Lafayette. This was a real jump up, a much heavier, pretty grown up, sultry floral with jasmine, freesia, rose, osmanthus, patchouli, vanilla, and amber. Who remembers this original ad? My bottle has really honeyed over the years. It's meant to be more of a light pink liquid, but it still smells the same. The perfume that dominated most of my teenage years was Marc Jacobs' Daisy. Launched in 2007, so I wore this in my mid to late teens. It was a birthday or Christmas present every year in every possible form. I feel like I remember advertising campaigns for these fragrances so vividly because I was obsessed with magazines as a teen. The Daisy vibe, always girls in fields. A fruity floral this time with wild berries, white violet, jasmine and sandalwood felt youthful and fresh, but a little bit mature too. At some point in my mid to late teens, I also wore a bit of Paul Smith floral. Don't think it's around anymore. This launched in 2005 and I found it in London in 2007 in Paul Smith's Covent Garden store on Floral Street, hence the name. I saw a reviewer describe this floral as having a 70s flower power spirit. There was a bit more spice to it with orange, grapefruit, ginger, water lily, magnolia, orchid, tonka bean, musk and amber. 
Later, in early university years, after discovering the joy of diptyque candles, I wore a lot of diptyque ophrygia. Still have the tiniest bit left at the bottom of the bottle. Freesias are one of my favourite flowers. They have such a distinct scent, and this captures that with white freesia plus pepper and woody notes to add some depth. I guess this marked the beginning of me moving towards more simple, straightforward floral fragrances like Jo Malone. Diptyque O Rose was a birthday present a while ago. I haven't worn much of it yet, but I really like it. It's a much stronger, more full-bodied rose compared to Jo Malone. The notes include bergamot, black currant, lychee for fruitiness, then centifolia and damask rose, geranium, white musk, cedar, and honey. The effect of that combination is like the petals of a rose plus the leaves and the stem. There are green notes there too. A couple of skinny diptyque tubes from previous holiday sets. L'Ambre dans l'eau is a fairly similar scent to Bay if you're a fan of that candle, one of my favourites. This means shadow in the water and is meant to tell the story of summer daydreaming by a calm river and napping under a weeping willow. That's just the brand's description. It's really a fruity green floral again with rose and blackcurrant leaves. Philosikos is a perfect fit for fans of their figgy, figgier candle, like a trip to the Greek islands with fig trees in all their glory. Crisp fig leaves and fruit, coriander, pepper, blackcurrant, coconut and cedar make this one woody, fruity and green. It smells like a really handsome man in a linen shirt. <laughs> I don't know, oddly specific, but just go with it. Someone back me up here. Glossier U launched in 2017 as the ultimate personal fragrance. It's so recognisable, particularly in New York. You can't take more than five steps without this wafting past you. It's called Creamy, Sparkling, Clean and Warm with Ambrette, Ambrox, Musk, Iris Root and Pink Pepper. I'm not super into it because I prefer florals and it's the hardest one to put my finger on. So in my past review, I tried to get creative with descriptions and so did you. Poetry in in the comments of that video. In more recent years as a beauty creator, I've had the pleasure of being sent a handful of fragrances to test. A favourite has been Saint Rose, an artisanal fragrance company named after the patron saint of gardeners. They reimagine luxury with responsible practices, partnering with 1% for the planet, using upcycled raw materials and offering a recycling return service. Juliet in White is a beautiful balance of sweet and spice with white tea, pepper, Californian tangerine, a heart of wild jasmine sambac, Turkish rose, Italian bergamot and a base of Australian sandalwood and ambrette. Sandalwood is the brand's signature ingredient across their scents, sourced from a Western Australian farm known for its work with and support of the local Indigenous community. This one was perfume with a very kind personal touch. Chloe has a famous signature floral fragrance, loved this beautifully minimal makeup ad with Clomence Posy back in the day, but it was reinvented with a rose tangerine twist in 2020. This bright floral has fresh notes of rose and tangerine blended with blackcurrant, cedar and white amber. English actress and celebrity makeup bag star Lucy Boynton was the fresh faced star for the current campaign. I'm sure some of you have seen the commercial for Armani My Way with stunning Puerto Rican actress Adria Arjona travelling through Tokyo, Thailand, Seville and India with Birdie singing in the background. Described as a new vision of free-spirited femininity, this refillable bottle feels like the most sophisticated traditional perfume here, with Calabrian bergamot, Egyptian orange blossom, Indian tuberose and jasmine, Madagascan vanilla and Virginian cedarwood. I think it's fair to say floral notes were fairly common here, so in the spirit of my favourite red roses, I've listed some other rosy favourites in a new blog post on matildaonvideo.com. Squarespace is not only a website builder to get you started, but a great place for blogging. The posts are easy to edit, you can insert text, images, completely customise the look. You'll find the usual product culprits in that post, but let me know if you'd be interested in a video too. If you're a budding blogger, Squarespace offer a free trial, then when you're ready to launch, you can visit squarespace.com slash Matilda to save 10% on your first website or domain name purchase. Whew, I have a bit of a headache after filming this. That's a lot of perfume in one place, but it was really fun for a change. I hope you enjoyed wandering down perfume memory lane with me. There are roses planted in 
all of the garden beds on that lane, by the way. Please share your favorite perfumes in the comments. Did you have any matches here or any suggestions for me? If you found a light floral you think I might like, I'd love to hear some of your scent memories or fragrances you associate with different stages of your life. Get descriptive, please turn it into a poetry festival in the comments again. Thanks for watching. See you next time.